So I think that most of us want the same things in life, right? We want a life where we don't have to worry about our bills, where we can have some financial stability, maybe even build a little bit of wealth for ourselves. I don't think that's a controversial opinion. But if you've ever tried to learn about personal finance, I'm sure you found that it can be very overwhelming. There are so many things to consider, so many different aspects to understand, and it can just really feel like too much. And while it's true that personal finance can be pretty complicated, there's all these things to understand, different kinds of accounts and investments and budgeting strategies. The truth is that there really only are three things you actually need to know and understand in order to build wealth for yourself and to set yourself up to have a stable future. These three concepts are honestly the only reason that I am where I am today, and they're gonna be the only way I'm gonna to get to where I wanna to get to in the future. My hope is that by watching this video, you're gonna get not only a better idea of how to save money, but a better understanding of why you want to, the motivation to know you need to, and then to know what to do with that money to set yourself up to succeed. So let's get right into it. If you wanna save money, if you wanna build wealth, if you even maybe wanna become rich one day, the most important thing above anything else that I think you need to know, and the thing that I talk about constantly, is delayed gratification. To me, delayed gratification is all about balance. It's about understanding that by saying no to something today, you're allowing yourself to say yes to something even better tomorrow. Now this can apply equally to both very small things and very large things. On the small end, it might mean that for example, instead of going through the drive-thru on the way home from work tonight, you just go home and you cook your meals there. And by doing that every night this week, by the time that the weekend rolls around, you now have some extra money in your pocket to be able to go out with your friends or go spend that money on something that's a lot better than a sandwich from McPukes. And on the larger side of things, it might mean deciding that you're gonna stay living with roommates or even with your parents a little bit longer than you really want to, but knowing that doing so is giving you the opportunity to save up a bunch of money so that you can eventually move out into a place you actually wanna live in. I sleep in a racing car, do you? Life really is all about balance. And for all of us, except for the richest people in society, we have to make decisions because unfortunately we just can't have it all. Like I said, every time that you're saying no to something, you're allowing yourself to say yes to something else. But the opposite also applies. Every time you say yes to something, you're forcing yourself to say no to something else. What you'll probably find is that as you learn to practice delayed gratification and you learn to implement this balance into your life, you're also gonna find where your priorities really lie. And it's gonna really help you to understand what matters to you and what doesn't. There are certain things for all of us that are worth spending the money on. There's certain things for all of us that are worth working the hours for because they're important and they're things that we find a lot of value in but you're gonna find that a lot of the things you thought you valued, you maybe don't value as much as you thought. And you're probably also gonna find that a lot of the things that you might've thought were a big sacrifice to live without are actually not. It's totally not a big deal and you're totally fine. Like personally, I know I've mentioned this before, but I stayed living at home with my mom until I was 26 years old. And that was not necessarily my idea of a fun time. Like every other young person, I wanted to move out. I wanted to have my independence, get my own apartment, but I knew that doing so would sabotage my abilities to then buy a house later because I couldn't afford both to rent an apartment and to save a down payment. And though at the time it felt like it was a difficult thing to do and I saw everybody else around me doing the things that I wanted to be doing, I knew that there would come a point down the road where my decision and my ability to just kind of stick it out would pay off and it obviously has. Learning to delay gratification is not only important as a skill to have in life, but it really allows you to understand where your priorities are and to find that balance that works best for you. I promise you, it is the best thing you can do. It might feel difficult at first. I kind of consider it to be like flexing a muscle and the first few times you do it, you're weak and that muscle has never been worked out before and you don't know what you're doing and it hurts. But the more you do it, the stronger you get and the easier it becomes. And eventually it doesn't feel like a sacrifice at all to say no to things because you're not really saying no, you're saying yes. And you're saying yes to things that are so much better. Really quick, before we go any further, I want to take a quick moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, Blinkist. Blinkist is an app that has over 5,500 nonfiction books and podcasts condensed down to 15 minute versions called Blinks, which you can either read or listen to as an audiobook. Listening to Blinks has become a new part of my daily routine and my favorite way to learn new things about personal finance, productivity, and habit building. This week, I listened to a book that's been on my list for a while, The Millionaire Next Door, and I think it goes perfectly with what we're talking about in today's video. It talks all about how the public perception of what it actually looks like to be a millionaire is all wrong and how the vast majority of millionaires are actually just unassumingly normal people living in average homes, driving unremarkable cars, because the key to building wealth and actually becoming financially independent is not buying expensive things to flex, but instead living humbly so you can save and invest aggressively. 
I think it's a great read for anybody trying to learn about personal finance and trying to understand how to prioritize things in their life. Blinkist also has a new feature called Blinkist Connect, which comes automatically with all premium memberships and allows you to share both your membership and book recommendations with a friend. So you're essentially getting two memberships for the price of one. Click the link in the description box below to get 25% off your premium two for one membership and to get started with a free seven day trial. The second concept that you're gonna to have to understand if you wanna build wealth for yourself actually ties directly into the first, but it's the complete opposite of delayed gratification and it is opportunity cost. If delayed gratification is what you gain, opportunity cost is what you lose. To try to explain this to you in the most simple way possible, I'm gonna use a bit of an exaggerated example here, but just bear with me for a minute. Let's say you make $30 an hour at your job. Let's say you work full time, you're busy, you're tired. $30 an hour for an eight hour day would be $240 a day. And let's say at your house, there's a bunch of stuff that needs to get done. You need to mow the lawn, you need to walk the dog, you need to fix the fence, you need to do this, you need to do that. There's all the stuff that needs to get done and you just don't have enough time to do it yourself. You have a couple options. You could take a day off of work and deal with those things on your own, or you can outsource them. So let's say you decide to take the day off. That's gonna cost you $240 in lost wages to get those jobs done on your own. But let's say instead you decide to outsource them to somebody who only charges $20 an hour. And let's say that person still has to work for eight hours. $20 an hour times eight hours is $160. So if you did the jobs yourself, it would cost you $240 in lost wages. But if you went to work and you paid somebody to do it for you, you'd be only paying $160, which means you'd still be up $120. So by you taking the time off of work and doing the job on your own, the opportunity cost is $120 extra. This concept also applies to spending money and investing because for every dollar that you spend, it's one less dollar that you're able to save and therefore invest. And with the idea that investments build and compound over time, which we'll talk more about in a moment, every time that you're spending a dollar, you're not just spending a dollar. Every time you spend a hundred dollars, you're not just spending a hundred dollars. What you're actually doing is also blowing the opportunity cost for the interest that that money could generate if it was invested. Now, none of this means that you shouldn't be spending money or even that you should feel guilty when you do. None of this means that you should be living inside of a cardboard box to try to maximize your savings. Please don't tell anyone how I live. All this really comes down to is what I talk a lot about on this channel, which is assigning value, deciding what is important to you and what you assign value to and if you're getting good value for your money spent. When you spend $100, don't just ask yourself if the thing that you're buying is worth $100, but ask yourself if it's worth the two or 300 that you're ultimately spending in tomorrow's money. If the answer is yes, then that's great. You do you, spend the money, get the thing, do whatever makes you happy. But I just think it's important to come at this from an educated perspective and to make sure that the decisions you're making are in alignment with the decisions you'd actually wanna be making if you had all the information. I'll give you a personal example from my life that I'm experiencing right now. Um, and that is painting this house. As you guys may have finally noticed, this wall behind me is painted. Thankfully, the painter's tape is gone. All the patching is covered up. Hallelujah, took me long enough. So the deal was this, as some of you know, I moved into this house back in June and I immediately started renovating and I spent quite a bit of money renovating the house and everything is pretty much done now, but the house still needed to be painted. And I had decided, you know what? I've spent enough money. I can't hire out anymore. It's just painting. I'm gonna do it myself. How hard can it be? Famous last words. I will admit I was humbled very quickly. It is so much more work than I had realized. It is so much more difficult Difficult isn't the right word. It is so much more tedious and it's just, it's a lot harder work than I had recognized and it's a lot more time consuming than I had recognized. And so I've put in some time and a friend came over and helped me out and we did the majority of the main level here, but the upstairs still hasn't even been touched. And we already put in like, I don't know, 30 hours worth of painting. And I can't imagine how much more time it would take me if I decided to continue doing the rest of the house myself. And I have to look at this from an opportunity cost because I've been trying to paint on the weekends, but I work during the week. And on the weekends, I generally work on these videos and I can't do it all. And so in order for me to dedicate the time to painting the house myself, I would either have to take time away from work or I'd have to skip making a video for a couple weeks. And I had to look at what that would cost me to do. How much money would I lose if I took time off of work versus what would it cost me to hire out and just let somebody else who's more experienced and quicker paint the house for me. The truth is that when I crunched the numbers and I figured out how much it would cost me to take enough time off of work to finish the job, it would probably cost me more money and lost wages than it would to just hire out. And so needless to say, I'm currently in the process of interviewing contractors and trying to find somebody who can work within my budget because it doesn't make sense for me to lose more money by missing work than it does to just hire the job out to somebody who actually knows what they're doing because I don't actually know what I'm doing. Shit. 
All right, so now we understand delayed gratification and I consider that to be the how. And we understand opportunity cost, which I consider to be the why, right? How do we save money and why do we save money? I'm gonna to refer to this third part as the and now what? So now we know how to save, we know why, and now what? The and now what is compound interest. Compound interest has been called the eighth wonder of the world because it is the most powerful force to either building or breaking your finances. Compound interest in its purest form is just interest on top of interest on top of interest. Compound interest can devastate you if you're stuck paying it, but it can actually make you super rich if you're the one earning it. Let's say you spend $100 on a credit card with a 20% annual interest rate. That means that if you don't pay off that $100, by the end of the year, you now owe 120. And that's not great, but it gets much, much worse. Let's say you still don't pay it off after another year. It's not just another $20 that's added on, it's 20% not of the initial 100, but of the now 120 that you owe, which is now $144. And if you still don't pay it off, by the end of the year, now you owe $172.80. And if another year goes by and you don't pay it off, now you owe over $207, which means in just four years, the amount of money that you've spent has now doubled. Now you owe twice as much as you had originally spent. Wouldn't you rather be on the other end of that? Me too! What if instead of spending money and paying compound interest, what if you were investing money and earning compound interest? What if instead of spending $100 at 20% interest, what if you invested $100 at 20% interest? Now, I'm not saying that earning a 20% return on your investment is typical or to be expected. I'm just using easy numbers for examples here. But if this were the case and you invested that $100, rather than owing over 204 years, you would then have over 204 years. That means the money that you have would more than double in that four year period. In actuality, the kind of return you can expect on your invested money if you were, let's say, investing in an S&P 500 index fund is roughly 7 to 10% per year. But what that means is that your money is roughly going to double about every 10 years. So if you put $100,000 into an investment today, in 10 years from now, it's going to be worth about $200,000, which is great, right? Your money's doubled. But in 10 years from then, it's going to double again. And it's not just going to double from that initial 100,000. The entire 200,000 is going to double. So by the 20 year mark, you now have $400,000. And 10 more years go by and it doubles again. And now you have $800,000. And 10 more years go by and now you have $1.6 million. So in 40 years, your $100,000, thanks to compound interest, has become $1.6 million. There's a saying in investing which goes, time in the market beats timing the market. And what that means is that rather than trying to guess the highs and the lows and trying to buy low and sell high and get in at the right time, because that's just gambling at the end of the day, there's no guarantee you're gonna be able to do that. And statistically, you're almost guaranteed not to be able to do that. But if instead of worrying when the price is high and the price is low and how much to invest here and there, if you just put money in consistently at whatever the price point is and just keep investing it and let it sit there over time, yes, it'll go up some days, yes, it'll go down some days, but over a long period of time, over 10, 20, 30, 40 years, it's gonna go up and up and up. And that time in the market, regardless of the small micro fluctuations, that time in the market is ultimately gonna make you very rich. Each of these three concepts are pretty important on their own, but they're particularly powerful when you can combine the three of them together, because then you essentially have a blueprint for how to build wealth and how to set yourself up for a good life. You have the how, you have the why, and you have the, okay, now what do I do? Without thoroughly understanding these three things, I'm not really convinced that it's even possible for most people to make a proper budget and actually stick to it, let alone to invest or plan for their future otherwise. But of course, like always, none of this is official financial advice. This is just my two cents. This is just the way that I look at money and the way that I manage my life financially. And I would love to know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. I'd love to know if these are things you already put into practice in your life, or if not, if they're things that you wanna put into practice and what your motivations are. So leave me a comment down below and let me know. If you enjoyed this video at all, if you found any value in it, or even you just found it entertaining, please go ahead and hit that like button. Feel free to subscribe as well if you haven't done so yet. You can follow me on Instagram at according underscore two underscore Nicole. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button below and joining Levi's fan club. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching as always. I really do appreciate it. Take care. See you next week. Have you ever woken up five days a week to go to a job you hate? I have. Me too!